Welcome to our latest video on the topic of group 4 oxides. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to describe the bonding that exists in carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and understand that carbon monoxide is used as a reducing agent in the extraction of metals such as iron. You should also understand that carbon monoxide is a neutral oxide whilst carbon dioxide is an acidic oxide and dissolves in water to form the weak acid carbonic acid. And finally, you should be able to describe the bonding in lead 2 oxide, understand that it's amphoteric, and be able to explain the use of lead 4 compounds as oxidizing agents. Now, in our previous videos, we've learnt that group 4 elements can either be plus 4 oxidation state or plus 2 oxidation state and the plus 2 oxidation state becomes more stable down group 4. And this is due to the inert pair effect. So you can see from this table that carbon has oxidation states of plus 4 and plus 2, and the plus 4 is the most stable oxidation state. Silicon only has an oxidation state of plus 4. Germanium has an oxidation state of plus 4 and plus 2, but the plus 4 is the most stable. Tin has oxidation states of plus 4 and plus 2, but the plus 4 state is most stable. And lead has an oxidation state of plus 4 and plus 2, and the plus 2 oxidation state is the most stable. Now the inert pair effect is the tendency for the S2 electrons not to be used in bonding. So as you go down the group, the inert pair effect increases and that's why group 4 elements down the group have a tendency to form the plus 2 oxidation state. Now when we get to lead, which is right at the bottom of group 4, the plus 2 oxidation state is the most stable due to the inert pair effect being so strong. The inert pair effect increases down group 4. Now because group 4 elements can exhibit either a plus 4 oxidation state or a plus 2 oxidation state, it's possible to have monoxides and dioxides. Now carbon monoxide is an example of a monoxide of group 4 and it has the formula CO and carbon is in the plus 2 oxidation state here. Now silicon dioxide, SiO2, is an example of a dioxide and silicon is in the plus 4 oxidation state here. Now the ability to form stable dioxides decreases down the group as the plus 4 oxidation state becomes less stable whereas the ability to form stable monoxides increases down the group as the plus 2 oxidation state becomes more stable due to the increased inert pair effect. Now in this video, we're going to look at the oxides of carbon and the oxides of lead. So if we start with carbon, and we start with the most stable oxide of carbon, which is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has the formula CO2. It's the most stable oxide of carbon and normally exists in the gaseous state as linear molecules. Now carbon dioxide is colourless, it's odourless, and it's heavier than air. And carbon dioxide is made up of small covalent molecules and is classed as an acidic oxide because when you put carbon dioxide in water, it dissolves in water to form the very weak acid, carbonic acid, which has a chemical formula H2CO3. Now the reason that carbonic acid is classed as a weak acid is because it partially splits up into H plus ions when in water. You'll remember from learning about acids and bases that strong acids totally split up into H plus ions and weak acids partially split up into H plus ions when you put them in water. Now carbon dioxide is classed as an acidic oxide because it forms carbonic acid when you put it in water and it also reacts with alkalis to form salts. And these salts are either carbonates or hydrogen carbonates. So for example, if carbon dioxide reacts with sodium hydroxide, we could form sodium carbonate and water. So CO2 plus 2 NaOH forms Na2CO3 and H2O. 
However, depending on the moles of sodium hydroxide present, you could form the hydrogen carbonate. So you can see the equation for this would be CO2 plus NaOH makes NaHCO3, and that would be sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, it's also important to understand the bonding in carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a covalent molecule, and it consists of two CO double bonds. And you can see we have a bonding diagram here, and you can see the two carbon oxygen double bonds that are present as they share two pairs of electrons. Now, carbon dioxide is made up of simple molecules, and there's weak van der Waal forces between these molecules, and that's why carbon dioxide is a gas at room temperature. Now, other things we'd expect you to know about carbon dioxide is that carbon dioxide is released along with water when a hydrocarbon burns in a good supply of oxygen. And carbon dioxide can be tested for using lime water. Lime water is calcium hydroxide. When carbon dioxide is bubbled into lime water, calcium hydroxide, the lime water turns cloudy because you form an insoluble solid, a precipitate of calcium carbonate. And this equation shows this, CO2 plus CaOH in brackets 2 forms CaCO3 and H2O. Adding more carbon dioxide will eventually result in the white precipitate of calcium carbonate dissolving to form a colourless solution of calcium hydrogen carbonate. And calcium hydrogen carbonate has the chemical formula CaHCO3 in brackets too. And you may have come across calcium hydrogen carbonate previously when you studied hard water. Calcium hydrogen carbonate is the cause of temporary hard water. Now the other oxide of carbon is carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is the only stable compound to contain carbon in the plus two oxidation state. However, it's a much less stable oxide than carbon dioxide, and it is formed in the incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons. So when a hydrocarbon burns in a poor supply of oxygen, you form carbon monoxide. Now carbon monoxide is a toxic poisonous gas, and it stops your red blood cells picking up oxygen. Now carbon monoxide is only slightly soluble in water, and it forms neutral solutions. So it's an example of a neutral oxide. It is readily oxidized and burns in air with a blue flame, forming carbon dioxide. Now carbon monoxide is a good reducing agent and can be used to extract metals from their ores. For example, it can be used to extract nickel, it can be used to extract iron in the blast furnace, and it can also be used to extract copper. The equation here shows the reaction that would take place. CuO, copper oxide, would react with carbon monoxide to form copper and carbon dioxide. Now, in this reaction, the copper goes from plus two oxidation state to zero. It's been reduced. And the carbon goes from plus two oxidation state to plus four and has been oxidized. Now, a reducing agent is a substance that causes another substance to gain electrons or lose oxygen. So carbon monoxide here is a reducing agent. It causes the copper to gain electrons and go from a plus two oxidation state to a zero oxidation state. Now, the reason that carbon monoxide can do this is because carbon monoxide is in the less stable plus two oxidation state of carbon. And therefore the carbon changes from plus two to plus four. That's oxidation, a loss of electrons. Those electrons can go to the copper and change it from plus two to zero. Now, just like with carbon dioxide, it's important to understand the bonding in carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is also a covalent molecule. 
it consists of a triple bond between the carbon and the oxygen and one of those bonds in the triple bond is a dative bond a pair of electrons is supplied by the oxygen to the carbon carbon monoxide is also made up of simple molecules and has weak van der Waals forces between these molecules so now let's turn our attention to oxides of lead lead 2 oxide pbo is the most stable oxide of lead lead 4 oxide however pbo2 is an oxidizing agent and it easily becomes reduced from plus 4 to plus 2 all lead 4 compounds are oxidizing agents so we've seen this equation previously pbo2 will react with 4 hcl to form pbcl2 plus cl2 plus 2H2O. Now lead 4 oxide PbO2 is classed as an oxidizing agent here as it oxidizes the Cl- ions to form chlorine gas and the plus 4 oxidation state of lead is changed to plus 2 so the Pb4 plus ions gain electrons they're reduced to form Pb2 plus ions. Now this reaction works because the plus 4 oxidation state of lead is the least stable form of lead and it will be readily reduced to the more stable plus 2. Remember the plus 2 oxidation state of lead is the most stable due to the inert pair effect becoming stronger down the group. When plus 4 is converted to plus 2, reduction takes place, a gain of electrons. So therefore lead 4 compounds can be used as oxidizing agents because they can cause other substances to lose electrons and these electrons then are used to convert the plus 4 to the plus 2 oxidation state. Now it's also important to understand that lead 2 oxide has ionic bonding so we have ions held together in a giant lattice it's got a giant structure so therefore it will have a high melting point to be a solid at room temperature it's classed as an amphoteric oxide and this means that lead 2 oxide will react with both acids and bases now if we're asked to show why a compound is amphoteric we should illustrate this by writing an equation to show it reacting with both an acid and an alkali so lead 2 oxide pbo would react with an acid such as hydrochloric acid to form a salt and water so PbO plus 2HCl will form the salt lead chloride PbCl2 and water H2O now the reason this is amphoteric is because lead 2 oxide will also have a reaction with alkalis such as sodium hydroxide so for example lead 2 oxide PbO reacts with water h2o and 2 naoh sodium hydroxide to form the soluble complex na2 pb oh in brackets 4 and this has a state symbol aq because it's a soluble complex now our observation here would be that lead oxide pbo is a white solid and this would form a colorless solution when it reacts with sodium hydroxide and water. So now let's test your knowledge of the oxides of group 4 with some practice questions. So on this slide we have question 1, question 2a and 2b and on the next slide we have 2c. So read through the questions, pause the video, have a go at them and then we'll have a go at question 2c. So here's question 2C, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers to questions 1, 2A, 2B, and 2C. So now let's go for the answers to question 1, question 2A, and 2B. So in question 1, you're asked to write a chemical equation to describe the reaction of methane burning in a plentiful supply of oxygen. So when you burn a hydrocarbon, you get carbon dioxide and water. 
So this is a one mark question. So the equation would be CH4 plus 2O2 forms CO2 and 2H2O. One mark if you said that. Now question 2A is asking you to name the acid formed when carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in water. Well, the acid that's formed is carbonic acid. And for question B, you're asked to write a chemical equation to describe this reaction with water. So it would be CO2 plus H2O in a reversible reaction forms H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. State symbols here would be G for carbon dioxide, this is a gas, L for water, this is a liquid, and AQ for carbonic acid because it's an aqueous solution. Now for part C, you're asked to explain why carbonic acid is described as a weak acid, and this is a one mark question. Carbonic acid is classed as a weak acid as it partially splits up into H plus ions when in water. So here's our third practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question 3a is asking you to describe using a chemical equation how iron can be extracted from iron oxide using carbon monoxide. So iron oxide reacts with carbon monoxide to form iron and carbon dioxide and the chemical equation would be Fe2O3 plus 3CO forms 2Fe plus 3CO2. If you have that you gain one mark. Now part B is asking you to explain why this reaction is classed as a redox reaction and it's a two mark question. Well it's classed as a redox reaction because carbon is oxidized from plus two to plus four, one mark if you said that, and iron is reduced from plus three to zero in this reaction, one mark if you said that. So here's our final practice question and this comes in three parts. Part A and B are on this slide and part C is on the next slide. So once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll show you part C. So here's question 4C. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers to questions for A, B, and C. Now for 4A, the question asks you to write a chemical equation to describe the reaction of lead 4 oxide reacting with sulfur dioxide to form lead 2 sulfate. So the equation would be SO2 plus PbO2 forms PbSO4. One mark for that. And for part B, you asked to explain with reference to the oxidation states of lead why lead 4 oxide is an oxidizing agent in this reaction. And this is because the oxidation state of lead changes from plus 4 to plus 2. One mark if you said that. So lead is reduced. In other words, it gains electrons. One mark if you said that. So part C asks you to state why, as group 4 is descended, the relative stability of the plus 2 oxidation state increases. This is a one mark question. And this is down to the inert pair effect getting stronger down the group. If you said that, you get one mark. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to describe the bonding that exists in carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and understand that carbon monoxide is used as a reducing agent in the extraction of metals such as iron. You should also be able to understand that carbon monoxide is a neutral oxide, whilst carbon dioxide is an acidic oxide and dissolves in water to form the weak acid carbonic acid. And finally, you should better describe the bonding in lead 2 oxide, understand that it's amphoteric, and be able to explain the use of lead 4 compounds as oxidizing agents. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS, and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radichemistry.